All right, so the volume of a pyramid or cone is one third base times height. Capital B, capital H means the exact same thing as it did with a prism or a cylinder. So taking a look here, notice in this picture we have a square base, right? We have a pyramid. They give us the height of the pyramid. And so the volume will be one third base times height. What am I going to plug in for capital B? Base times height, absolutely. Okay, and so now we go and uh, plug in here. So we have one third times five times five, it's the base and the height of the square. And then I've got to multiply that by six, which is the height of the pyramid. So I can go ahead and take one third of six, which gives me two. So five times five is 25. 25 times two gives me a volume of 50. Okay. Right. The height of the entire pyramid goes from the vertex down to the center of this because it's the height of the pyramid is always that perpendicular height. It's perpendicular to the base. You were thinking of slant height. Slant height gives me the height of that triangle. And we use that for surface area. Okay. We don't use slant height for volume. Any other questions on our first example here? Yes, ma'am. If we just divide every 5 times 5 times 6, if we just divide that by 2, would that be... It's the exact same thing. Yep. Because 5 times 5 times 6 gives you 150, okay. and 150 divided by 3 gives you 50. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Let's try another one. Whoa. What the heck is going on in this shape? It is a triangular pyramid, yes. This triangular pyramid has a special name to it. It started with an O, and it's not O, oh, no. OBL. Oblique, there we go. This is an oblique pyramid. Now, when we were uh, finding the volume of oblique cylinders or oblique uh, prisms, did the equation change? No, the equation didn't change. So guess what? The equation doesn't change here either. Volume is still going to be one third base times height. And so we're gonna take one third times the base. Well, now our base is a triangle. So what's my area formula for a triangle? One half base times height and then times height. So, taking a look, we have one-third times one-half times the base of my triangle. Now, again, key features of bases and heights is that they have to be perpendicular to each other. And so if I'm looking at that triangle, three and four are perpendicular to each other. So those are going to be my base and my height. And then remember that capital H... Capital H is the height of the pyramid, and that is always perpendicular to the base of the pyramid. And so this triangle is the base of my pyramid, and they are showing right here that three is perpendicular to that base. Three is perpendicular to that entire surface. And so three is my height. Okay, questions on plugging in? Okay, well now we can do a little bit of canceling here. One third times three goes away. One half times four gives me two. And so I have two times three, my volume is six cubic inches. Questions? Okay. Why don't you guys work this one on your own? This is a cone. The height of the cone is 50. The radius of the cone is 30. I'll give you less than a minute here to work this problem. 
So this is what you should have for your setup on this one. Again, it's a cone, so we're using one third base times height. And the base is a circle, so we're using pi r squared for capital B. And then we plug in what we know, which is 30 for the radius and 50 for the height. Now, here is a mistake that students often make, okay? Order of operations says that you have to do parentheses first. There's really nothing we can do inside of our parentheses, right? It's just a 30 there and it's just a 50 there, so there's nothing we can do, no operations there. But then it says to do exponents next. So you have to calculate 30 squared before you do anything else, okay? Often I see students who come in here and go, oh, I can take 1 third times 30 and gives me 10. And then I'm gonna take 10 squared and get 100, and 100 times uh, 50 gives me 5,000. So my answer is 5,000 pi. And that's wrong. You're doing the order of operations in the wrong order, and you cannot do that, okay? So you have to take 30 squared, which is 900. And then you can take one third of 900 to get 300. And then 300 times 50 is going to give us our volume of 15,000 pi cubic meters. All right, questions on the cone? No, let's go to the back. All right, couple of problems that I wanna work here. First off, let's take a look at this one. There's a problem with this one. What's the problem? They give us the slant height. They don't give us the height of the cone. And so when I come in here and use my volume formula, one third base times height, so I get one third pi r squared times height, I don't know the height. So I have to find the height. Okay, and to find the height, what are you going to use? Pythagorean theorem. And by the way, I recognize this as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. <coughs> Some of you might be looking at that going, where's the 3, 4, 5? I see 6 and 10. Well, remember, this is 3 times 2, and this is 5 times 2, so therefore this other side must be something times 2. It's a 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. Okay, so that means our height is eight. Okay, so our volume is one third pi times six squared times eight. And again, you have to square the six before you multiply by one third. And so I get 36 times one third gives me 12. And so my volume is going to be eight times 12, which gives me 96 pi cubic feet. All right. What I'd like you guys to do now is I would like you to try number four with the people around you. Ready, set, go. All right, so the two solids that we have in this shape are the uh, cube and the pyramid, right? So our volume is going to be a cube plus a pyramid. Well, the cube has a base of base times height times height plus the pyramid has a base of base times height and then times the height of the pyramid. Let's start plugging in. The cube is going to be 8 by 8 by 8 plus one third times the base of our pyramid is the square, eight by eight. And the height of that pyramid, they give us that. Right there, they're giving us the height, capital H. And so that's gonna be five. 
All right, so eight times eight times eight gives me 512 plus eight times eight times five gives me 320. Oops. But the problem is if I take one third of 320, I don't get a nice terminating decimal. I don't get um, a nice whole number. Okay, so if we want an exact answer, we can't multiply one-third times 320 because it doesn't give us an exact answer. It gives us a repeating decimal. So if we're wanting an exact answer, how should we be giving our answer? As a fraction. Okay, we should be giving our answer as a fraction. And, um, and so that's, that's why it's always important to make sure to read the instructions, know how they want you to give the answer because we're going to have to do some extra work right now for an exact answer. Unlike if we wanted it rounded to a decimal place, we could just throw this in our calculator right now and we'd be done, right? All right, let's take the practice of uh, doing this as a uh, fraction. And so, rather than having one-third times 320, that's going to be 320 over 3. If I multiply those two things out, that's what I get, 320 over 3. And now I've got to take 512 and write it as a fraction. Currently, it's 512 over 1. My common denominator is going to be a 3. So I've got to take 512 times 3. 1536. So now I'm adding with the common denominator. So I just add 320 to that. My volume is 1856 thirds. Well, now I just got to check. Is 1856 divisible by 3? No. no, it's not. So this is my exact answer for my volume in cubic centimeters. Questions on number 4.